as you know, it's just a few more days to the new year. And I do not want to go into the new year by making any more commentary directed at uh, these persons because this battle, this war, we won way back, what, three, four months ago. And to continue to talk about them brings us to be redundant. And I don't like uh, redundancy. I don't. It's boring. Uh, matter of fact, not only talking about them. Unfortunate because we don't do nothing new in the so-called black community. You hear the same old stuff over and over again. I'm on Facebook. The same old memes over and over. Talking about Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Elijah Muhammad, whatever. Over the Egyptians. The same stuff over and over again. Redundancy. What Jesus going to do? The same old stuff. Nothing new. And I don't like that. I don't want to be like that. The same thing. Because we're not creating anything. We're not original. We're not creative. We don't have vision. We don't have a purpose. So we're not striving for a goal. It's just repeating. And like this Dean back right here. The other, the most, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad over and over. You can love Jesus. And you can love Muhammad. But when you hear people that have to say this over and over again and become redundant, they're trying to sell you like they really believe. Because you shouldn't have to do that over. You have to understand the most utterly Elisha Muhammad. <laughs> so I don't want to be a part of that redundancy. This ministry is about life. Every time a woman brings life into the world, it is new life. This boy, this girl, has never been on this planet before. Now, after they get older and listen to some of this spiritual, spirituality and some of this religious stuff, yeah, they will say, you know, I... In my former life, I was Abraham Lincoln. In my former life, I was Cleopatra. They are always in their former life, if you notice. It's always somebody famous. Kings and queens and what they never say in their former life, I was a crack, I was a crackhead. <laughs> they never is <laughs> always something, you know. Something you can brag about. <clears throat> or in my former life, I was a snake. In my former life, I was a deer. In my former life, I was a roach. You never hear those type of stories. It's always, well, you know, this is not my first time being on the earth, you know. I In my former life, <laughs> I was George Washington. <laughs> in my former life, I was King Tut. Uh, King Tunahadaman. <laughs> Never. Well, in my former life, I was just a janitor trying to make ends meet, support my family. You know, my dog got hit by a car. 
And you never hear those type of stories. <clears throat> but we don't want to go into the new year talking about these people because they're not worthy. However, this does not mean the last part of the puzzle, the last part of the war does not continue. It just don't have to be on YouTube. And this person and the other stinky, stinky one were, you know, these two here, they remind me of the Missouri Department of Mental Health. Who is liars like them? The Missouri Department of Mental Health is a manipulator, liar, deceiver, just like these people are and have no shame. The only thing persons like this respect is when the sheriff come to their door and put a subpoena in their hand. Hey, hey look, it was so funny when the sheriff came to that facility and started putting um, legal papers in these people's hands, it stopped being funny. Because, see, there's a chance I can win. Then it becomes real serious. Then they become nervous. All that big shot talk, all that bragging and boasting they was doing, now you see how serious it is. So, I decided to do my research because I am a victim of rape. This woman, if you want to call her a woman, this woman raped me. And I researched and made some phone calls. And in the state of Ohio, you have 20 years in order to file a case. So I'm still within the statutes of limitation. Now, what's going to make my case rare and what makes my case unusual, of course, is I'm a male who is accusing a female of rape. Very rare. I'm very sure it has happened. We live in a different type of era. And if it's good for women, it should be good for men. No means no. I did not want this person. And she has given me the evidence that I need in order to show and support my case. When you listen to her, she basically tell you that she raped me. He's chemically castrated. How do you know? The only way you would know if me or any man or boy is chemically castrated is you play with their private part. You play with their penis. Now, if I want you to play with my penis, if I want you to put your hands under my underwear, you have permission, that's one thing. But if I tell you no, that's not what I want to do, then no means no. She has said out of her own mouth that I was looking for a sexless relationship. It could turn. It could change. But right now, I'm not interested because I don't, I'm not feeling you like that. And once I began to know her, a nasty person, a tyrant, a liar. I can overlook 
the size. I can overlook a lot of things. But when you're just a nasty person, plus you have these attributes and physical attributes that I'm not attracted to, it's time for us to go. It's time for us to separate. And if you listen to her talk, that's her main focus. I can't, I can't be married. I need some dang lane. That's her focus. So what if I'm with you and she's obsessed? I got to have me some dang lane. That sounds like this is a person who will rape you. And it's not that she physically assaulted me, but she took advantage of a situation that I was in knowing that I would uh, suffer a consequence if it, if I did not submit to what she wanted. Now, so how do you know? I'm chemically castrated, she says. How do you know? I'm impotent. How do you know? It is because you jumped on top of me and you played with me. That's how, that's the only way that you could, you could know. Because you, you raped a man. You took advantage of a situation. You listen to the videos. She confessed. And even if you marry, no means no. This is the era of what they call that. The, the, the. The me movement, me too movement. If it's good for women, it should be good for men. I'm going to raise this up. Because if women can come out of nowhere, 20, 30, 40 years, and accuse a man of rape, then a man should be able, 10, 20, 30 years or whatever, He should also be able to get the same type of treatment when he is making accusations, allegations that he was raped. At minimum, she is guilty of sexual assault at minimum. But this was rape. This was not sexual assault. This was rape. This is why she can talk about chemical castration, it didn't work. How do you know? How do I know how what what a woman's uh, vagina do unless I mess with her vagina? That's sexual assault. When she said no means no. And if they discover or it went further than that, it's called rape. So nobody takes nothing serious until they get legal papers. Of course, the wheels of the legal system move slow. But we need to get this done. What she done to me, and she knew I was suffering. I was at one of the lowest points in my life. At the time, and she took advantage of me, the only thing on her mind was dingling. The only thing on her mind was a slave. She wanted a male slave for her cult. And that's where all this anger comes from. She wanted somebody to help her enjoy her boring, comfortable slave life. And I wasn't the one. So we'll see. We'll see. What you going to do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. What you going to do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys.